Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I got... Oh. <laughs> Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. As you know, we have Valentine's Day coming up right around the corner. And even though I wasn't quite planning on doing a a Valentine's Day look per se. The look that I did on our model Haley today turned out just so gorgeous and um, romantic, really, yet sultry and effortless. And I couldn't think of any boy or girl who couldn't rock this on Valentine's Day. So dang it, I'm calling it our Valentine's Day makeup tutorial. So if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm prepping Miss Haley's skin with the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream and I'm applying this on using the Beauty Blender. She had told me she has pretty sensitive skin and she even brought the skincare she uses with her. So I figured we use the moisturizer she brought. That way we don't have any surprises. Her skin is used to this product and it works for her. Once we have the skin prepped and hydrated with a moisturizer, it's time to move on to the foundation we'll be using, which for today is the Luminous Foundation by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And as you see here on the back of my hand, I'm mixing together both the moisturizer we had used along with the foundation to shear down the pigment before applying it onto the skin with the Beauty Blender. So here's the deal with this. I absolutely love Haley's freckles. So I wanna be really careful not to completely cover these up. With that said, we're we're going to use a very sheer coverage of foundation. To create that sheer coverage, I'm just using a standard medium coverage foundation and mixing in equal part of her moisturizer. And this will sheer out that pigment. As you can see, it has a, a barely there look to it. It still looks like her skin. She still has that glow from the skincare, but it really just evens out her tone a bit without having to compromise the natural texture of her skin. Next up, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer in the shade Toffee to bronze up her skin. So I, I'm not sure if you noticed earlier when I was applying on her skincare, but Haley's body is quite a bit tanner than her face, and that's due to her spray tan. She doesn't get her face tanned and uses makeup to match everything up, which I did the same thing. Something about how spray tans look on the face just... They just don't look quite right. So I use makeup to make everything seamless. Now, because I'm looking for a really sheer layer of product on the face today, I'm using a pretty deep shade of concealer to bronze up her skin, focusing on the areas around the perimeter of the forehead, the cheekbones, and nose, areas that the sun would most naturally hit. The reason I'm using a shade that's dramatically deeper than her natural skin tone is because I'm solely using it for the pigment, and the pigment alone, not for the coverage. It's kind of tricky to explain but basically I apply the smallest amount of this onto the back of my hand first and then I work it around with the face brush I'm using so I can manipulate this product into the bristles and then I lightly stipple this onto the face. Because the dramatic difference in shade it looks like a lot of product but but in fact in reality it's the tiniest amount and because we're not needing to use a lot of this product we're not going to end up getting much coverage out of it which is perfect because we're not looking for coverage remember we're just you looking for that that color pigment so that we can match up her face to her body and then on top of that we have to keep in mind that i'm diffusing this out with the beauty blender so not only is the sponge mixing in whatever foundation is left in it from the prior step but it also is soaking up some of that concealer bronzer Next, for concealer, I'm using the Revealer Concealer from Kosas and applying this to the under eye area using an eyeshadow brush. I think this is one of those eyeshadow brushes that come with the um, the, the Naked Eyeshadow Palettes from Urban Decay. I love these kind of dual-ended brushes for applying on concealer and lipsticks and so on and so forth. Anyways, I'm applying a small amount to the under eye area and eyelids before buffing it out with the Beauty Blender. I'm not looking for a dramatic under eye highlight today. I'm just looking to remove any of the blue and red undertones around the eyes with this concealer. As for the shade I'm using, I, um, I can't quite remember off the top of my mind, but I'll find out and I'll be sure to include it down below along with everything else I'm using today. Besides the under eye area, I, you'll also see me here in a second use this concealer to spot conceal and to kind of erase any redness we may see around the nostrils before also blending it out with the Beauty Blender. If you haven't noticed yet, there's, there's a bit of a trend here with always following up with the sponge. It just helps keep everything looking blended and flawless and seamless. You hear me say it all the time, Time, but 
When in doubt, blend it out. Alrighty, so we're just finishing up here with a concealer. By this point, everything is starting to come together and we now have her face matching her body. But I wanna add a little color to her cheeks before we use powder. So to do so, I'm using the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush in the shade Happy and first applying this onto the back of my hand, working a face brush into it and then applying it onto the apples of her cheeks. Similar to how we applied the, the contour and bronzer earlier. First onto the hand, work the product into the bristles of the brush, apply it onto the skin, Skin and then buff and blend it out with a sponge. When I do use a sponge, you'll notice me even dragging this up onto the brow bone and across the nose. This just comes down to personal preference, but I love dragging the blush up to these areas of the skin. I think it just makes the skin look effort, effort <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I can't talk today. I'm sorry, y'all. It makes the skin look effortlessly sun-kissed. <laughs> there we go. I did it. Oh goodness. All right, moving on. To set the makeup into place, I'm using this translucent setting powder from One Size Beauty. I'll begin using this product with a clean eyeshadow brush to set the concealer we used around the eyes. Again, as I've been saying throughout this tutorial, we're looking to keep the skin fresh and breathable today, so I don't want to pack on powder. I'm using just enough to set the makeup into place and to prevent it from creasing. If you did experience a bit of creasing around the eyes while you were applying on the blush, be sure to blend that out before setting it with powder. That happened to me just a tad bit, which is why you saw me blend it out with my ring finger before applying on the powder with the eyeshadow brush. What's nice about using an eyeshadow brush for these more refined areas of the face is that we can get a more precise application, almost like a real life Photoshop tool that we can use to blur little areas of the skin and little imperfections we don't want seen. Whereas with this large face brush I'm currently using, we can get a more soft, more diffused application of the product around the face without having to compromise that beautiful sheen from the skin we're seeing around the cheekbones. Now that we have the complexion product set with powder, we're gonna begin on the eye makeup. The first product I'm using is this Matte and Metal Melted Shadows from Huda Beauty, and I'll only be using the matte side of it, which is this muted lavender shade called a VI Pink, and I'm applying it onto the lid, starting from the lash line and working it up to the crease before diffusing out the edges with a clean eyeshadow brush. As I said in my intro, it, it wasn't really my intention to create a Valentine's Day makeup look per se, especially since I filmed this a few weeks ago, but it, it just kind of worked out that way. I love a lilac lavender eye look, and I feel like purple gets left out a lot when it comes to Valentine's Day looks. There's a million tutorials here on YouTube doing the same red lip or pink shadow look, so I feel like this is kind of an unexpected twist to the classic Valentine's Day style makeup we see. And this eye look paired with the soft radiant skin and a nude lip looks so romantic and effortless truly and even if even if you wanted to pair it with a red lip it would still look incredible i did that in this look here a while back and the red glossy lip with the lavender eye was still just stunning so it goes to show you can put your own twist on this and take it any direction you'd like Next, I'm dipping into that fair lavender shade we see in the bottom row of this Rose Pastel eyeshadow palette from Huda Beauty and placing that in the inner corner for a pop of brightness. And then for the outer half of the eye, I'm slowly going to start building up the depth using the slightly deeper purple shade in the palette. You really could just use that, that liquid eyeshadow we first used and call it a day, but I wanted to make this a little more interesting by building up the shape of her eye by placing that deeper shade purple throughout the crease and in the outer corner of both the upper and bottom lash lines. Once we have that shadow placed and blended, I'm heading over to our L'Oreal Carbon Black Voluminous Mascara to run through the upper and bottom lashes, really working this into the root of the lash and lifting upwards. To keep this look soft, I'm opting not to add false lashes today. And as you can see, she has incredible lashes as is, and this mascara really just gave it that extra bit of impact. Now, after I had applied the bottom mascara, I felt it turn the eye shape downwards a bit. So to counteract that, I'm using this Marc Jacobs eyeliner in the shade Earthquake and placing this just in the outer corner of the waterline. This is a brown eyeliner, so it's not going to be as harsh as a black would be, and it gives the outer eyes a little depth, therefore the illusion of a more lifted outer corner. 
Now with this clear brow gel from Benefit, I'm gonna run this through her brow hairs. So the, the way I like to use this is by first running this against the brow hairs, as you see here, opposite from the direction they grow in, before then running it in the same direction. And what this does for me is it allows for the hairs to become fully saturated in the gel product before setting it into the place and shape that I want it to be in. Once I complete the other brow off camera, I'm gonna head over to this Illamasqua Beyond Liquid Highlighter in the shade Days to give her skin a little extra glow. I kind of have a particular way of applying liquid highlighter too. A lot of times when applying on a liquid highlighter with a brush, the bristles kind of dig into the foundation. And when powders mix with liquids, they often create a, um, like an unflattering texture on the skin. So the best way to apply this on is by applying a small amount to the back of the hand, dispersing it around with with your finger, evenly tap the beauty blender into it, and then stamp it onto the skin. If you haven't seen me do this before, or if you haven't tried it yet, I really think it's, it's going to change the game for you. Give it a shot, it's worth trying out. Okay, moving on, I'm using this lip liner in the shade Suede Rose from KKW Beauty to line the borders of her lips. This shade is, is really what it sounds like. It's a rose nude shade that matches pretty well with her natural lip color, possibly a slight bit deeper. Um, I guess it depends on what device you're watching this on. Sometimes when I watch my videos on a computer or a phone, the colors are a little more accurate, but then when I watch it on my TV, the colors are like super uh, saturated and they can look a little orange. I, I don't know. Anyways, for gloss, I'm using this Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Taffy Tees and placing this on the lips, kind of working that lip liner around to give a more diffused appearance. Especially since I didn't use a lipstick today, I wanted this lip to be subtle and not feel like it's being drowned down by three or four or five different lip products. And then lastly, I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray to set the makeup and to lock it into place, which officially makes this the last step in this Valentine's Day makeup look we created on our naturally beautiful model. Model Haley. What's in it for me? There we have it kids, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.